Hello and welcome back to A Shot of Wildlife. In today's video, I'm going to tell you almost everything you need to know about the signal crayfish. If you have seen a crayfish in the UK in the last 15 years, the chances are likely that it would have been a signal crayfish. These were introduced from North America to various sites in this country in the 1970s as a species for farming, but of course, they escaped into the wild and were probably deliberately released by people who wanted to eat them. Unfortunately, signal crayfish are larger than and spread a disease that is fatal to the native white claw crayfish, and as a result, they have now almost gone extinct here. Signal crayfish grow to measure up to 18 centimeters in length and have two powerful claws. These are bright red on the underside in adult animals and have a noticeable bluey white patch on the upper side of where the claws hinge. Alongside their claws, crayfish have four pairs of smaller legs for walking and two long antennae that protrude from the front of their heads. Around their mouths, they have three pairs of leg-like limbs called maxillipeds, which they use to handle food and apparently stones, but also to keep the water moving through their gills. They have abdomens which are made up of five segments and a flattened tail at the end of their bodies. Males grow larger than females and usually have larger, more prominent claws. Crayfish molt their exoskeletons as they grow and when this happens, they're able to completely regrow limbs that they may lose whilst fighting or to predators. Signal crayfish predominantly live at the bottom of fresh water courses, including in lakes, ponds, rivers and streams. They can swim, especially when threatened, by folding their bodies up and propelling themselves backwards, but they usually move by walking along the bottom, although they will sometimes climb the bank and have even been seen emerging from the water to get food from above the water line. They're mainly nocturnal, but during the summertime, it isn't unusual to see the larger individuals out in the open. They are opportunist omnivores and will eat everything from vegetation and decomposing material to small fish, fish eggs, invertebrates and they will even eat each other if food supplies become scarce. Unfortunately, this can have a knock-on effect on the waterways in which they live as they can reach such a density that they strip the bank and bottom of the habitat almost completely bare. Alongside their demand for food, signal crayfish also cause harm to their habitats by creating extensive interconnecting burrows up to two meters deep into the bankside, sometimes leaving it looking like a sponge and susceptible to erosion and collapse. Signal crayfish are prolific breeders. In autumn, the large males hold territories and then attempt to seduce passing females by trying to pin them to the ground. If successful, they pass over a pouch of sperm and let the female leave. She would then go on to a sheltered spot and lay between two and four hundred eggs which she fertilizes with the sperm before attaching them to the underside of her own body. She will carry these eggs around until spring when they hatch. The young crayfish, once free swimming, leave their mother and become independent straight away. It takes signal crayfish two to three years until they are able to breed but as they can live for up to 20 years, they have the potential to produce lots of young in their lifetimes. Signal crayfish are native to the United States and Canada, but they have been introduced across Europe and are now found in at least 25 European countries. They have also been introduced to Russia, to some parts of Northern and East Asia, and to South Africa. In the UK, the best thing that people can do to protect native crayfish is to be very careful that you are not moving signal crayfish or the disease that they carry from one place to another by checking, cleaning and drying any equipment that you use in and around waterways. And there we go. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about underwater wildlife in the UK, then click this one on the screen now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.